Sony PlayStation Portable was announced at E3 2004 and released the subsequent year in 2005. The PSP came out to be Nintendo's main competitor against their Game Boy line of systems and their upcoming DS line of systems. The PSP was marketed to be just as powerful as the PS2, and for the most part it was, receiving good quality ports of well-known PS2 games. With all that said, this is why you should buy a PSP in 2020. Now buying a PSP in 2020 is probably not the first thing that comes to mind when you're looking to get a new system. The reason the PSP looks like such an attractive system nowadays is because of the homebrew and modding community. It's no secret that this thing is a homebrew beast. Just about any game from the NES to the PS2 is available on this system in one way, shape, or form. And modding the system is as easy as downloading a few files and dragging and dropping them onto the PSP. Some of the emulators that you can get for this system include the NES, SNES, N64, Sega Genesis, Neo Geo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games with PlayStation 1 games natively supported on the system. There's actually a program that you can download on your computer to make any PlayStation 1 game playable on the PSP without an emulator. But none of that should downplay the sheer greatness that is the PSP's library. If you're a fan of any of the popular game franchises from this time, most likely there's a port for the PSP. Things from Rock Band to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Ratchet and Clank, God of War, and of course Tetris, the PSP's library has you covered. Not to mention that games for the system are pretty cheap, with most games coming in from 2 to $10. I would say another cool reason for owning a PSP is that you can play MP3 files and movies on it, but since everybody has a phone in their pocket nowadays, it's not really necessary. If you're unaware, the original PSP came out with five different iterations. The PSP 1000, 2000, 3000, E1000, and the PSP Go. Each of these models had their own specific differences. The PSP 1000 was the original, the fat model. It had 32 megabytes of RAM and a screen that had some ghosting effects. The PSP 2000 upped the RAM by twice the amount giving it 64 megabytes of RAM, slimming down the system and giving it a better screen. The PSP 3000 kept the same form factor as the 2000, but the screen was downgraded, causing some people to see scan lines in the system. Next up is the PSP E1000. This PSP was released only in Europe as a budget option and came with no Wi-Fi support, only UMD. Lastly is the PSP Go. This system was released in all regions, but what was so weird about this system at the time is that it was digital only. You could only get your games from the PlayStation Store on this. And it also had a sleeker form factor, with a slide-out screen, reminiscent of the phones at the time. The PSP Go is also the only system to support Bluetooth, giving you access to controller support. I myself have owned the PSP 1000, 2000, and the PSP Go, and in my personal opinion, I would recommend either the PSP 2000 or PSP Go. I believe you should get a PSP 2000 model if you're looking to create a physical library of games, and you're just looking for raw performance power at a good price. I believe the PSP Go is for somebody who's really looking to mod their system and wants a nice sleek form factor. The PSP Go is my favorite model of the PSP. But that being said, it is the most expensive version of the PSP, coming in anywhere around 90 to 120 US dollars. However, I do believe having Bluetooth on the PSP Go is well worth it for the money. Did this video help you decide if you want to buy a PSP? Let me know in the comments below. Also, me and my friend Julian the Sauce God have created a Discord server for our fans, so if you want to join that, link is in the description. Otherwise, I hope this video was informative and helpful for you, and I'll see you in the next one.